It's Friday and it's time for another UAS weekly news update. And this week there's kind of a big topic and the big topic is the fact that the FAA has started to release some information about the knowledge test for recreational flyers. The second thing I want to talk about is a sheriff department that got approval to fly over people. Next, I want to talk about Drone Up, the company that was awarded a major contract for UAS services, which may mean some good news for you. And then I want to talk about a hashtag, a hashtag which is, if you fly, we can't. And uh, I'll talk about what that means. You probably already know uh, what that means. So let's get started with this big news, which is the FAA has released some information about the knowledge test for recreational pilots. Now, there's no data just yet on what the test is going to contain. So I'm sorry if I get you excited. Uh, they did release a request for information today on their website, on the FAA website, and I'll put a link down in the comments so you can see in the description so you can see what that's all about. But um, as you know, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that with the Reauthorization Act of 2018, the FAA Reauthorization Act, Congress mandated that the FAA uh, goes through and implement some new regulation. And one of them is the fact that recreational pilots or hobbyists, as, we, as I call them sometimes, um, are required to pass a written exam. And this has been open. This is one of the two items that are kind of left on the list of eight different items that the FAA had to complete. And, um, and, and so this, it looks like that they're working on finally making this happen. And uh, the test so far, nobody really knows what's going to be in the test. I mean, we can already guess based on what's in the part 107 exam, but um, the, the FAA is asking for input as to how the test should be administered to remote pilot, uh, to recreational pilots. And uh, there's a seven page document that they put out. And this is more of a, uh, a document that's gonna try to uh, find places that are going to administer the test. Now, from what the document is saying, and I actually spent a lot of time this afternoon reading through this. Uh, from what the document is saying is that they're looking for third party, kind of like they did with Lance. They didn't want to be in the business of providing Lance approval. So they basically allowed uh, companies to become Lance approval, Lance providers. So they're looking to do the same thing here with testing companies that are going to uh, be administering the test. And they're looking to do it online, which is a good news. This is something that I kind of had predicted and that, that the FA I think had announced a couple of times that it was going to be um, available online. And um, if we look at other countries around the world that have been doing this, I know at least Canada or friends up to the north um, are doing a test online for their basic test. I think it's $5. I can't remember that from the top of my head, but I think it's $5 to take it. And uh, the FA doesn't mention the price of the, um, of, of the test online. The only thing that they mention in there in terms of pricing is that the providers of the test should not charge the FAA. So this should be free of cost to the FAA. So you know what's gonna happen is that the price is going to be passed down more than likely to you, the customer. And um, so uh, I've, I've been thinking about this and I've been thinking about the, 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 the possible people that are gonna be providing this test. And it's kind of limited because you see the requirement for the companies and it's a pretty big requirement. So. Um, what I want to hear from you, you the viewers and you the users and that are going to be flying, uh, if you're not a remote pilot yet, actually, even if you're a remote pilot, because guess what, you're still going to have to take the test even if you are a remote pilot. And I think I've mentioned this in a video before. So I want to hear from all of you, every single viewer. I want to hear a comment about how much you would be willing to pay for this exam. And, uh, and when, when the, the providers come out and, um, and then we'll find out how much they're going to charge, we'll see if it kind of lines up with your expectation. Uh, there's going to be some work to be done from them in order to provide this test. It's going to have to be a platform. They're going to have to verify your identity. They're going to have to provide you with a document. The FA is actually asking for feedback as to how the document should be provided. Uh, they're also asking feedback as to uh, what needs to happen, for example, if the applicant is less than 13 years old. Now, it is a regulation in the uh, Part 107. Uh, and for registration that actually not part 107 just for the registration that uh, nobody can register the drone unless they're 13 years or older uh, so it'll be interesting again none of these are finalized um, I don't think they're really taking comments from the general public at this stage but I think it's interesting for you to start getting ready for this understand that actually the FAA is going to provide some training um, some training modules I should say 
We will be providing training modules as well as the Pilot Institute. Actually, we already have a course available online for, which is called Drone Pilot 101, which is helping pilots uh, find out in what airspace they need to be uh, requesting uh, approval, a lot of information about the weather. So we're, I kind of created a, a condensed version of the 107 exam uh, and, and created a course uh, out of it uh, for you to basically understand the basics of flying before you go up in the air. So one of the challenges I think, and I'll stop on this because I don't want to ramble on for forever, but one of the challenges I think for the FAA is going to be to uh, spread the word and make sure that whoever is buying a drone understands that they can't fly the drone until they have taken the test. So I think there's going to be a balance between the, the cost of the exam and people that are going to be uh, not wanting to take the exam because it's too expensive. And, uh, and hopefully the training is good. As I said, we will be doing our best to provide some training so that people can pass the exam. And, uh, and not only that, because as always, I want people to be proficient rather than just be able to pass the exam, which is two completely different things. You can be proficient, you can be passing the exam and know nothing about drones and know nothing about flying, which is, uh, which is the worst possible scenario. So uh, again, in the comments, please tell me what you think about this. Um, I want to gather as much of the, um, the, the, the feedback, as much of the, the feelings of, of you guys out there uh, about this process, because hopefully at one point we will be able to provide some feedback. And I want to do this as a company, uh, provide feedback under Pilot Institute and represent all of you guys. So let me know in the comments and I uh, look, look forward to actually uh, interacting with you guys and hearing what you have to say about this. The second piece of information is a sheriff department in Burley County, which is in North Dakota, received approval to fly over people. Uh, now it says routinely fly over people, which means that they're just allowed to do it with the waiver. Um, they said that they are the first law enforcement agency in North Dakota and the second in the country to receive this kind of approval, which, um, which is kind of a big deal. Again, we've talked about this before. We talked about flying over people and how more and more waivers were approved because of the uh, pair zero parachute. This is actually the parachute that they're using on the, on the Mavic 2 series drone. And uh, I think it's just an interesting piece of news that the law enforcement would be interested in doing this and using drones to, uh, to do their job. So what do you think are the implications of uh, police departments across the country using drones? And uh, how do you think this is going to, um, what kind of perception do you think this is going to create from civilian people? Um, now that drones can be used for law enforcement. I think it's going to be a, an interesting uh, feedback here. Next, I want to talk about Drone Up. Now, Drone Up, if you don't know about uh, Drone Up, the company is a company that provides aerial services um, using contract pilots. Contract pilots, just like you or myself. If you sign up for Drone Up, I'm signed up, um, then they will send you uh, different different uh, missions that you can go and fly and receive money for. Um, they were just awarded a, a big contract with the Commonwealth of Virginia to provide services to all of the state agencies, including uh, higher institution and all the public bodies, which is kind of a big deal. This is going to be a huge contract. And uh, this includes emergency services, law enforcement, aerial inspections, mapping, uh, agricultural stuff, and, and even some marketing stuff. So um, if you are not a drone-up pilot, and if you live in the Commonwealth of Virginia or around it, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to get some money for flying these missions that they just get a contract for. So go ahead and sign up. It's uh, droneup.com. From the mission, I haven't done a mission with them because I've been so busy creating courses and, and doing other things, but um, the, the payouts are pretty good from what I've seen. So I think this is a great company. I think this is taking us on the right track rather than uh, a race to the bottom in terms of pricing. I think DroneUp is doing something good where they're actually providing um, missions that actually pay off some money for uh, you, the drone operator, which I think is, is great. If you're already a drone up customer and you've done some of their missions, please leave me a comment. Let me know how it went. Let me know how uh, what you think about the customer service. Let me know what you think about their the interaction with them. And uh, I, I want to hear. I want to hear what kind of uh, feedback you have from drone up. Last thing I want to mention today is. Um, 
If you fly, we can't. This is the slogan from the, the Forest Service. Uh, if you see Forest Service, I know currently there's two right around where I live in Prescott. Uh, we get two temporary flight restrictions over those areas. If there is a forest fire, there is a temporary flight restriction. Do not go and fly your drone, okay? I, I can't say it any more clearly than this. Um, this is dangerous for the pilot. This is dangerous for the people on the ground because the people on the ground rely on the service provided by the aircraft in the air, uh, dropping the water. This is also a major issue for the people that have houses maybe around those fires that may burn because the aircraft are grounded because you're flying your drone around a fire. Stay on the ground, wait, go take pictures when everybody's gone and, and see the damage, but um, keep people safe and pe people's houses and lives and livestock and, and pets and everything that are in those houses uh, so that uh, firefighters can do their job. This, the same is true if you're gonna be flying over any kind of emergency where a helicopter may be flying. If there's a crash on the highway, don't go and fly. It could be a helicopter that comes in to save somebody's life and they're gonna be grounded because you're flying a drone. So be respectful, be a considerate pilot and, um, and just stay away from it. And that's, that's all I wanna say right here. So um, I'm gonna end it as always. Uh, please Please go ahead and like the video if you liked it. Leave a comment. I love interacting with you guys. I get a lot of comments every week and I, and I really love that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe. You'll get all the notifications every time I post new videos. Uh, I get a big series coming up with lots of videos uh, in it. And if you're not a remote pilot just yet, please go ahead and sign up for a course. Uh, we've got a really good course for remote certification. Um, you'll get 12 and a half hours of content, which is one of the biggest course out there, if not the biggest. Uh, you'll get a ton of information information not only to pass the test but also to be proficient at flying your drone and I can't emphasize that enough passing the test is not good enough you need to be proficient at flying and uh, right now we're running a special you'll see the link in the comments for $50 off and I've got a, a big announcement that's coming up hopefully next week everything will be done and I can share it with you guys for the course we are, we're adding some really cool content and uh, and I'll keep you posted on that I'm actually really really excited about this so with this this is it uh, guys have a great week and I'll see you next week for more information. I'm actually heading out to Florida this weekend for uh, one of my really good friend's wedding. And uh, so I'll be uh, escaping the, the dry heat to get into the humid heat of Florida. Um, I don't miss it, lived there for a long time, but uh, this is it for now. I'll see you guys next week.